All right, so it is estimated that people lie on average uh, twice per day. Um, most of these lies tend to be harmless, such as coming up, an, or, uh, sorry, coming up with an excuse for not showing up to an event or um, showing appreciation for an undesired gift. However, some lies can also prove to be damaging. They can affect someone's <laughs> reputation, um, and they can also have uh, negative <clears throat> effects on someone's mental and physical health. And this is due to the fact that lying is actually associated with a fight or flight response. Uh, this response normally arises when facing threats or stress. And so um, lying actually causes an increase in cortisol levels, uh, just as what would happen when, uh, again, facing a threat. Um, and uh, cortisol, uh, so cortisol is a, is a stress hormone, sorry, and uh, it can have effects such as increased blood pressure, elevated heart rate, and vasoconstriction. These effects are actually positive, are actually good uh, when in a situ when you're facing a situation of stress and you have to have a quick and effective response to that uh, stress or danger. However, uh, continual exposure to cortisol can actually lead to cortisol resistance, which itself can result in fatigue, depression, memory impairment, and cellular death, among other uh, negative uh, health consequences. So. If lying has the potential to um, produce so many um, negative effects, then why is it such a common behavior in humans? So I propose that lying is correlated with various biological features, such as brain structures and hormones, and that these biological underp underpinnings exist because lying providing, provided adaptive advantages for our prehistoric ancestors and may continue to help us today. So for, for the purpose of the study, um, I define lying as the act of intentionally producing and communicating false statements to deceive others. Um, lying can be affected by several factors, one of which is age. Uh, children begin to lie between two and five years of age. In one experiment where children were instructed not to look at a hidden toy, it was found that 30% of two-year-olds, 50% of three-year-olds, and 80% of eight-year-olds lie. And so basically this shows that as uh, kids grow, they tend to lie more. Um, lying peaks in adolescence and decreases in adulthood. This peak is believed to be due to the fact that adolescents will pretty much result, um, resort to any means to kind of prove themselves. And then uh, finally, um, it has been shown that the mastery of lying increases as a function of age. And this is because um, the brain structures involved in lying are, do not fully develop until, until adulthood. So basically, we need to uh, have those structures develop in order to be able to be good at lying. Lying is also affected by sex. Um, while there is no significant sex difference in the number of lies that are told per conversation, there is a difference in the types of lies told. Uh, so one study uh, made the distinction between other-oriented lies uh, with self-centered lies. So other-oriented lies are lies that are told to protect the feelings and well-being of others, whereas self-centered lies are those that are told to enhance uh, one's own image. And so what was found in that study is that women tell more other-oriented lies than men do. So in that case, it would be a woman uh, complimenting someone else's appearance when they don't really mean it. Um, it was also found that men tell more self-oriented lies than women do, and so an example of this would be a man lying about his income. And what was also found is that uh, women are more likely to tell other-oriented lies when interacting with women rather than with men. And so ultimately, uh, it is believed that uh, these differences are due to the fact that women are more uh, concerned with cooperation, whereas men are more concerned uh, about their status. Um, so there are several biological factors that factors that impact lying. Um, so lying is actually modulated by the prefrontal cortex, which is a region involved in complex cognitive processing. So in one study conducted conducted among among 49 participants and using fMRI scan, scans, it was found that um, frequent liars displayed 20% more neural fiber in their PFC. And so ultimately what that study showed is that uh, a heightened connecti connectivity in the PFC uh, makes individuals more apt at producing lies. Lying is also modulated by oxytocin, which is a hormone involved in cooperation and trust. 
And so one study found that uh, uh, oxytocin encourages group serving dishonesty. Uh, that study was conducted among 60 adult males who were given an intranasal administration of either oxytocin or placebo. And the uh, experiment was designed such that the participants were given opportunities to lie. And what was found is that participants in the oxytocin, oxytocin group lied more frequently compared to those in the placebo group. Um, so the, this biological foundation uh, of lying actually exists because this behavior is evolutionary, evolutionarily adapted. Uh, lying is actually not a uniquely human behavior, it is also seen among animals. Animals deceive others usually to avoid predation or gain better access to food and mates. So for example, um, the annies replicate the calls of hungry dove chicks. Uh, so, so that incites the chicks to call, and that allows the, an the annies to uh, spot and eat the chicks. Uh, tufted capuchins use uh, false alarm calls to assert food from their conspecific, and that's specific specifically done by um, subordinate individuals, and that's a way for them to get food from uh, more dominant individuals. And then uh, lying is also seen among chimpanzees who withhold information to get exclusive, exclusive access to food. And in these scenarios, uh, chimps are put in uh, a condition where one chimp knows the location of hidden food and will actually like, let the other chimps know that food is, is located in a different spot so that that chimp can have access to the food on his own. Um, in terms of the adaptive value of lying among humans, we can see that specifically through um, the uh, motives that we have for lying. Uh, it is estimated that 80% of lies are told to defend or promote oneself. And uh, the, uh, the, most of these lies are motivated by a gain of either uh, material or emotional rewards. So material rewards would include things such as employment, promotions, or grades in school. Uh, whereas emotional rewards would be things like uh, getting uh, respect from someone else. Um, and so all this is supported by the fact that uh, lying is actually modulated by the nucleus accumbens, which is a structure involved in reward processing. So in one study conducted among 20 participants, again using fMRI scans, it was found that uh, there was an increased activation in the nucleus accumbens when uh, subjects lied after being promised a monetary reward. And so what that ultimately shows is that the nucleus accumbens motivates people to lie by activating the reward system. So um, we now know that uh, lying is, uh, we, we now understand the motives behind lying both socially and biologically as well. And lying can, in fact, help us uh, in, in our social relationships. Uh, but we also have to keep in mind that uh, lying can have detrimental effects. And so I will just say this, um, lie carefully, basically. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Margo. Uh, and the floor is open for any questions. Uh, Sorry, I, yeah, I need yeah, water. water, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was just interested if there was an effect of cultural values on uh, lies in general. So, uh, yeah, actually, um, people tend to construct their lies differently um, depending on like what kind of culture they come from. So, um, I, I read that uh, for people that are from, say, individ more individ individualistic societies, people will actually construct lies that have to do with the community. Whereas people that are from more communalistic societies will uh, construct lies that have to do with the individual. So it's like backwards. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, do people with like, mental conditions, you know, like psychopathy or like ASP, does that have like, I mean, is, it, is the biology the same or is it different? So they don't get the, I, I didn't look that much into that, but as far as I know, they don't get the negative effects that people that are not affected by these conditions would get from lying. So these conditions, you know, just don't get them. So these are not like pre, like, like default conditions that like, because you mentioned how one person lies more there, I think, was it the PFP? The, the, the prefrontal cortex? Yeah, yeah, that it, like it increases. So, so it, 
these like psychopaths or something don't have like already an increase of I'm not sure about that because again I didn't look into uh, the, the this type of condition specifically so I'm not sure but I do know that they don't suffer from the negative effects of lying as normal people would. I, I noticed that uh, you had it's on some slides that said the uh, mastery of lying increases a function of age. Yes. Is that just like following brain development or is it like continuing like even into like people's like late into late age? No. It continues to increase. It doesn't. Okay. Yeah, it's really just like basically you're going to uh, get better at it throughout you know childhood and then once you get to adulthood that's pretty once those brain regions are fully developed that's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. And on top of that uh, lying actually decreases in adulthood so it's not like they would have opportunities to keep practicing either. Right. I know this is part of your research, but um, do you know if like intelligence is related to lying or like how much people lie or how well? I didn't look into that at all and I didn't see anything about that. So, I mean, okay, lying does, like, when you lie, you actually have to do two things. You have to think about the line that you're telling to remember what it is you're telling people, but at the same time, you have to repress it so that you just don't just give it away. Mm -hmm. So that's actually a tricky thing to do, I would say. Yeah. So I would imagine that people that are perhaps a little bit more intelligent are maybe better at doing that, but I, I'm not sure. I really didn't see anything about that. Yes? Do you read anything about what would be biologically different to people who are compulsive liars but who are not psychopathic? I did not, yeah. I, I really didn't read anything about uh, you know, psychopaths and, um, yeah. So, yeah. I'm really curious. In, in America, with your research, do you see any trends or any literature dealing with, is there one group or one profession that is more likely to lie <laughs> as a group? I, I did not see anything on that, no. Um, but I mean, I would think that some professions rely on that more than others. Well, that's uh, what I was kind of... Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't read anything about that. No studies or anything then? No, I actually... It was actually really hard to find studies online. Um, and I don't remember coming across that at all. Yes. Do you see any association with social media and whether or not some of these impacts are different or the same if we're lying on social media versus lying face to face? So looking at like the, how different the effects are? Yeah, so if I post something that's obviously untrue, <laughs> um, um, I wonder if the effects are the same or if because I'm distanced from the people I'm lying to and they're not in front of me, if I'm getting the same effects ooh. biologically. I, I didn't, again, I didn't see any of that. Um, I don't know. If you I, continue doing research on this, it might yeah. be an interesting mm -hmm. path to go down. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah.